Thank you very much. Uh, I know I'm the only person keeping you from lunch, so I'll try and be on time. Um, so I must admit that when I was sort of like doing this paper, I, I, so my background is computer science. I'm much more sort of a technical person than a than a librarian. Um, I've just want to make sure that I uh, sort of address the audience the best. So can I just ask who here would consider themselves a librarian more than uh, having a sort of a technical background? Who would be more in that sort of area? Okay. Uh, and who would be sort of more a technical person here, I guess? Okay. So the majority technical, but then we have about a quarter of the audience. Okay. So I'll try and do both. And <coughs> So what, what we're doing in this sort of work, because it's a, it's a work in progress, uh, and this is sort of one of the initial stages of a much larger work. Um, if you look at the ELPUB website, when you were thinking of submitting, when you were thinking of attending the conference, you probably read what we wrote, and you saw this sentence, and it says, at the end, uh, you know, we bring people, lecturers, we bring practitioners around, and uh, we focus on interesting, uh, issues regarding electronic publishing in a widely differing context. And, you know, this is what we, we speculate that we're going to find things that are interesting to you, that you want to know about, that are contemporary, and that's why you're here, right? And that's why you submitted. And then you go to the call for papers and you look at the topics that we cover. And it's interesting when we were compiling these that um, it's, uh, it has about hundred different topics that we cover and we also just to make sure say not restricted to these so you can basically choose whatever you want uh, when you're thinking as long as it's related and the interesting part is that when the next person after me the next program chair will compile this list I bet you that they will also increase this list by putting something of their own inside just as I did so this list will actually get bigger so the motivation for this is basically what do people want to know when it comes to electronic publishing? We are here for a reason because we have a common interest in electronic publishing because we um, uh, like to know more about a subject or we have some interesting information to give other people about the subject. But the question that I asked myself was, okay, what are we going to focus on in this community as a community? What is the most important topic that we should be focusing on? What do people really care about? What are they interested in? And what are we missing? And there's no way to do this because if I were to ask you what you think, uh, what do you think is one of the topics that Yale Pub or anybody in the electronic publishing community should look at, well, probably the main area that you'd say is, well, open access, right? because that was a, a, a major theme and you would give me an opinion. But what we say we do and often what we do are two different things. Um, and where are we moving towards? Is it only open access that will dominate the field? Um, I mean, is it vocabularies? Is it the frameworks? Is it what, what, what is interesting to the world now? So beyond sort of just going and asking people, which is basically what this is doing, we decided we'll do some text mining to find out some information, to start a pilot study. And if you were here yesterday when we were doing about the history of LPUB, you saw some statistics and some data about what uh, is published. Well, we want to go into a bit more detail into what the world is doing and what they're interested in. And not now, but also in five years from now, what are they going to be interested in? So we started with um, an active community. We chose LPUB. We said, okay, well, we need everything that's been here. So we took basically the last uh, decade, or to be precise, 13 years of LPUB. And we need to find, we said, well, we're going to look for things that this community thinks are common between all those years, trends that are stable, or things that are changing in the last maybe decade or more. And if you didn't know, by the way, um, there is a link to the ELPUB digital library and everything since 1997 is downloadable. So if you want to read any paper from this conference since the conception of this conference in 1997, there is an open library and the link is on the conference. So we went to the, um, and that's the link over there, 
the URL. So we went to this library and we said, okay, um, we need to create a methodology that not only we do, but we can also give to you so that if you want to also cross-examine our results or if you want to do the same with another uh, publication community or DL community, then you can do that and we can exchange our findings. And that's what we're going to do with a couple from people uh, at this conference. So the methodology that we used, so um, we did a, a text mining exercise um, and if anybody's interested in the way that we did this, let me know and I, I can give you the code that we've done so you can basically change it just a little bit and, and then you can run it on your own repositories or anywhere that you choose and you can do the same exercises and find some of the results. So um, we wanted to find in the beginning all the pages that contain PDFs of publications. So this is Python. Uh, we wrote a script and basically just went through the whole database and downloaded all the PDFs. Okay, so now we have a bunch of PDFs of 20 years, okay, 13 years. Um, I'll go, I'll, we didn't manage to get the uh, five years before that because of problems with uh, some of them were images instead of text, so we didn't have time to OCR them, etc. Um, but we've got this code if you want it. It basically goes through a website uh, and opens pages and checks if there's PDFs and then you can download them, okay? And what we did was we actually run this. So we have the second piece of code that just goes to a page and downloads all the PDF. If you want that one, let me know and I can give it to you. And we downloaded about 550 documents. Okay, so that's 10 to 13 years. Not all of them were downloadable. Some had a little bit of corruption. Some had uh, just images instead of text. But we downloaded about 550, uh, definitely the cleaner ones over the last 10 years. If you want to do anything like that, and one of my suggestions is maybe going online to every open access sort of journal you can think of in a specific community and just running those scripts and getting all this data, then you can do that. Okay, so it's not just, um, we didn't do this just for this conference, although we started as a test, you can actually run this code anywhere you want. So the problem with this was that we downloaded PDFs and they were human readable, but I don't, I wasn't, um, sort of ready to go through 550 documents and read every one and count every single word and figure out what the themes were, what the common terms were. Um, they were not computer manipulative. If, if you know PDFs, they're not very computer friendly. They're friendly to people that want to read them on any device, but uh, if you're using a computer to get a computer to read them to understand what text there is on there, it's very difficult to do so. Um, again, if you're interested, we have a script that will turn your PDFs into plain text and we can give it to you. So that was the second phase. So I'm explaining the methodology now of how we, we do the text mining. Um, and I know that manipulable is not a real world word, but I like it. So then we thought, okay, well, beyond that, we need to do some cleaning of the data. All right, so um, what does that mean? Well, I don't want to find out that a theme for the last 20 years is the word and because it exists in every single document. So we got rid of those words and um, we got rid of punctuation marks and we did everything in lowercase so that we don't um, think of a higher case and a lower case word as two different words. We then removed the digits because we thought, okay, again, this might not be unless it's something uh, that I haven't thought of. This is not relevant. Um, we got rid of all the white space and then we had the problem of matching the American English and the English, English too. So we uh, merged the words and kept them. Basically, we went through every document, we changed all the words to one type of spelling so that we can have. And then what we did was we also figured out, well, we need to also do a Porter stemming algorithm. What a Porter stemming algorithm does basically is if you have two words, for example, um, library and libraries, now basically this is the same word but to a computer, there's two different words, right? So um, this algorithm called a Porter Stemmer, what it does is it reduces every word to its very basic form. So library and libraries would get shortened to something like liber. So everything there would be associated and we know that they're talking about the same thing. Um, there is a camp which says that this is dangerous and uh, Google actually doesn't like doing this in its algorithms, but this is because of the ranking of pages, not because of uh, text mining. And this one wasn't written in Python, it was written in R. So if you want to the code again, come and find me and I can give you the code. Um, I'm saying this because I'm trying to tell people that it's, it's actually not hard to run these scripts if you want to do it, even if you have 
very little technical background of programming, you don't actually need it. Um, it's very easy to load a program and then just copy paste the code, know two or three things about the code and change it, and then you can run it on your own uh, desired URL or web pages and scrape all the data and manipulate it. So that's sort of an example of what you would get. And then all, all you do is just basically um, just change the some of the wording in there and you'll be able to use it to, to do what, what you want. So quickly moving on to what we've actually found. So this is the methodology, right? So if you want to do that, this is the methodology we chose to find what the most common things are. So if we look at the whole amount of documents from the beginning until the end, the, the words that came quite uh, sort of high up was access and develop. Okay, now we, we ignored words, you know, like publish and use because it's the conference. So the, the ones that actually came high up was access and develop. The abs mean the abstracts when we just looked at the abstract, which is sort of a summary of what the work was to see what it does. So access, the word access was actually very popular um, throughout the um, documents. So we didn't just go for how many times the word occurs, we went for how many documents occurs in how many years. Okay, because it might occur in just this year thousands of times and never before, that doesn't mean it was popular in a decade. So we saw the spread and access came up, uh, but open didn't. Okay, so this wasn't something um, in the past that and in the full text, again, access, availability, though, did come up. So the word availability and access came up. But again, open didn't exist as sort of a theme if you take the, the span. So it's a relatively recent concept. But the problem existed because if available, so avail, which is the stemmed word, availability of the access to data, people couldn't get to the data. So this was a problem that existed for a long time. We know this, but it's obvious, but it, it, we see how we can actually text mine to, to find themes that might come up. So there was a problem, and if they figured that out from what people were writing, then we see what the next stage is. So we hypothesized that if we actually do the same for three years, then we would try and see if they've tried to solve these problems. And lo and behold, if we do the same with the abstracts from 13, 14, 15, now we have open and access, okay? But no longer uh, availability, available. So now instead of sort of just putting problems in, we're actually suggesting solutions. So this is actually the, the main thing. And this is why we have so many talks now on open access. In the full texts, we also moved to other things like social, Knowledge, management, social networks um, is a big part now of publishing online. So these are also prevalent themes that we haven't looked at too much, actually. But people are writing about them, so maybe we don't know about it, but if I put a paragraph and then you put a paragraph and somebody else puts a paragraph in, it's not a main theme, but if we take all of them, then we can start saying that, okay, everybody has this small paragraph inside. That's actually important, so we should look at this. Can we help? And lastly, if we just look at uh, 2015, for example, we can do sort of yearly trends. Maybe something happened and we want to see how it impacted. A policy was signed in a specific country or in a specific uh, part of the world, like in Europe. Um, and then we can do sort of very, very specific things. And if we take that again, access and open uh, were the prevalent things. If we look at just the one year, and then we have on the full text, a model, project, and manage. So um, we see that it's similar to the last three years, but we can also have a look at you know, model. Are we, are we trying to model something? Did something happen last year? I'm not providing answers. I'm just saying that we can use these data and this method to find questions that we can look at and try and make some predictions. So some limitations that I have to admit now, and it's a work in progress, is that, okay, we only use the LPUB library at the moment. We only saw published papers. So if you look at a, a conference, you only look at what's published and not the, so I, I'm reviewing for a conference that had 1,200 publications uh, submitted, right? and they will accept about 300. That means the other um, 900 publications 
we will never see. I mean, they're going to go in other conferences, I'm guessing, they will be recycled, more work will be done, but it's not the whole picture. So we're only looking at the published stuff. And it's a real shame because all this work that's being done and we're rejecting and we're not reading, it, it, it might be important. It's, it's good to know, but we don't look at it at all. And we don't recognize problems by ignoring three quarters of work. Um, we also lacked OCR, OCR optical character recognition. So if there were PDFs that were pictures instead of actual text that you can select, so sometimes you get pictures of, of text instead of actual text, we weren't able to text mine those because I just ran out of time to do an OCR sort of thing on it as well. But it will happen, so the next phase will have OCR. Um, and also average terms need more scrutiny. So for example, we need to do some checks uh, of open and access, are they one word or is open something different and access something completely different. So we have some goals for the future. We want to identify larger collections that we can use um, so that we can make better decisions on policy on, um, when we're going and trying to make these uh, agreements with governments, try to advocate for what's going to come and what we need to look out for. So we need to find a lot more than just the LPUB digital library. We need to also include social media, Twitter, for example, that's people are, you know, some of you have been tweeting while you were sitting down and you were expressing opinions, questions, comments. We need to look at those as well. We need to include what people are thinking. Um, we identify topics, right? So the point of this exercise is not to just to answer questions, but to actually provide more questions for us. And through this, we're hoping to get a predictive model going so that we can see that in five years from now, what's uh, going to be out there just by the text mining exercise. Just we so the availability and the access stuff le led to maybe open access and the more sort of solution based Then, if we can see what's happening in five, ten years from now, maybe we can start addressing it from now. How am I doing on time? Is it? Yeah? I know. We have to go in five minutes. Perfect. Before. Thank you yeah. very much. Thank you. sure there are some questions and remarks on this very interesting study. Yep. It was too easy, right? <laughs> um, just a very quick question. I don't know if I um, just missed it. In your normalizing step, um, did you also figure out the negatives? Like, you explained afterwards availability or no availability. Like, does your algorithm also detect this or remove this or tag this in a special way? So, um, what, what, what the negative? What do you mean by the negatives? Um, like, if it's a different meaning, if you say, um, if if you write in your paper, um, I have access or I have no access. Right. If you collect all the accesses and you don't detect the meaning that is sometimes negative of this, it's a different thing. Yeah, so what we did was, because of the text mining exercise, we found the themes, then we could go in and, and understand the, the different papers and what they mean by that. So the work doesn't give you an answer to the question, what does available and what does access mean? It gives you the terms that you need to look into. You form your hypothesis based on the text mining exercise, and then you go in with other methods to answer those questions. So that was the one example that we saw when we went into the papers and we, we looked at the, the previous papers and we actually read them and went, okay, so what are they talking about? And they actually talked about the availability of the data which doesn't exist, the, the access to sort of like behind password protected payment systems, da da da, da. Uh, So we actually read those. We didn't use a computer to answer that question, but we found the question on the text mining exercise and then we manually did it. We don't have at this point in time um, an algorithm to find negative stuff, but of course it would be something that we need to factor in if we're giving automatic answers. But automatic an answers are very dangerous. I'd much rather keep to automatic questions than, than answers. Yeah, okay. I, I just want to, wanted to see if, if those two concepts, something positive and the opposite of it, if that would be in one cluster of your um, text mining or if it's two clusters then. But I understand it's all in one group then. It is, yeah, it is, but it's, yeah. Any other question? 
I just have uh, one remark. Uh, you're right, uh, the corpus you chose reflects as much the choice from the selecting committee, from the committee, uh, as uh, the submissions, in fact, uh, because only certain papers are selected, so as you study only the selected papers, then it reflects the choices of the committees or the different committees. So if you extend to the submissions, then you have a better representation about uh, the main topics. And the second one, the second remark for me would be to say that it could be interesting to, to add some sociology in your study, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because yeah. it, it would be interesting to, to check your results with a profile of uh, the, uh, the speakers of the researchers submitting papers, because I think that the so-called help up community, I'm not sure if it's a community, but the, let's say the help up community is very hybrid in terms of uh, skills and professions and specialization, so it could be good to have a better visualization of this uh, balance of skills inside the community to check against your results on the corpus. Absolutely. And again, uh, what I stress is just the methodology here and the pilot test uh, that we did. We, we definitely lack in sort of um, finding a specific community that we know is addressing a specific topic. But the, we were very happy that we could find this sort of like we can do this thing so that now we can take it and go and, and actually uh, answer that question of right now we need more representative uh, database of, of, of data to, to, to check. So um, absolutely, I mean, that's the next step. So we are looking forward to the next step. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>